Hey, hey, hey. It's another edition of the Sit Down at Uptown, man. The sit Down Uptown. We talk to all our comedians who come rock the house. Mm-hmm. I'm your host and owner of Uptown Comedy Corner, Angelo Sykes. And sitting in with me today, my man, known for quite a while, man. Quite yeah. a while. My man, Ronnie George in hey, the building. Man, good to be here, man. This is a nice facility y'all have. I should ask for more money. When, I, when you see all the extra rooms in the club that's paying you, but well, shout out to Uptown. This is my home club. I started at Uptown on Peachtree. Um, actually, my August 2nd was my 20th year anniversary, 22nd year anniversary doing comedy. So that's started at Uptown Comedy Corner. I started at J. Paul's, but then I went to Uptown right after that. So that's what me and Kato kind of started a little thing over there. We was, <laughs> we, was we was back and forth at it, but right, we was, right, right. It was me, Kato. Who else started with me? Daryl Dam, mm. uh, Mike Hunter, it was, uh, Gabe Gabriel Hart. He's a director now. Okay. He was a comedian. Food stamp was already making moves. Duval was already outside. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Big dog shit. Yeah. And Nard was OG. Rest in peace, Nard hosting, man. You know. All right, last man. year, last year we lost a good one, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. For sure, man. Comedy Club definitely took a blow with that one. That was my man right there. You let your great girl in. I like it. You look like an adult now, man. You know, <laughs> <laughs> imagine getting arrested by Angelo. You're like, boy, watch out, man. <laughs> you know, this is uh, this, this, all this came during the pandemic, man. During the pandemic, I let my hair grow out, let the great go on in. You look like a little bitty older boy. Look <laughs> like a little bitty older boy. <laughs> like a 13 year old lineman, like they play for Gresham Park. <laughs> Like, who bought, where birth certificate at? I don't believe that one. <laughs> that one 14. I don't give a damn. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, man. But shit, Uptown is the home, man. I'm going to always come back to uh, you know, the black on where the love is at. You know what I'm saying? The, the wings going to taste a little better. You know what I'm saying? The drink's going to be a little stronger. A little stronger. You got Aunt Love over there drunk. Shit. <laughs> Shout out to Aunt Love over there. Aunt Love. Has never wore the same sneakers twice. This nigga has three million pairs of. I've never seen him in the same shoes or hat <laughs> since 2002. This is a fact. I don't know where he lives and stores these goddamn shoes. That's a true story. That and love it. never wore this. I'm talking about different. All the shell toes, every single color. Every color. In white, he got all the ones in black, all the ones in blue. You like how you got all of everything? With matching hats. For him all and New them. Face, them the ones. New, yeah. Them yeah. niggas is hoarders. Too funny, brother. <laughs> So, Ronnie, man, you know, I always like to kick my conversation off by going backwards. You yeah. know what I mean? Well, let's take a roll. Let's take a trip, trip backwards, back man. Back down memory lane. Back down memory lane, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. Let's talk about a young Ronnie George, man, the kid Ronnie George, man. Where are you originally from, man? What was, what was growing up like for you? I'm originally from, um, I was born in Birmingham. I'm originally from Southwest Atlanta, man, Silver Road. I lived... Uh, I lived on Fairbanks Drive, and I lived off off of, off of Deal Avenue, Hartford Drive. So I lived on both sides of Perkinson Park. Mm. Those are my formative years. We lived off of uh, Kimberly Road when I was really little, like oh, wow. Ben Hill area. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So Southwest Atlanta to the to the go down. You know, <laughs> I, my formative years was at Silver Middle School. You know what I'm saying? Over there, that's where you learn how to fight, roast, uh, oh, dance. Man. You gotta know how to dance. You gotta know how to do all that shit. Skate. <laughs> <laughs> play football, you had to do everything, man. So you being a little chubby kid in the early nineties, you had to know how to roast and just to get the girls attention and stuff. And then niggas was robbing people still. Like in middle school back then it was rough in the nineties. It was not this uh use your feeling words middle school. Like niggas had pistols, <laughs> niggas them goose down coats. I got I think I got a pistol pulled on me for my coat. <laughs> Wow. Principal came right out there. He was like, well, you go home. I, was, I ain't never wear that shit again. <laughs> but I was at school with a mechanic jacket on. You know them dicky jackets niggas were now? Yeah, I had yeah. one of them, my daddy jacket on. I was like, really? I leave that, that goose down at home. Leave that goose at the crib. Yeah, yeah, that Southwest Atlanta was rough in the early 90s, man. But, you know, uh, little me, little little big me, you know what I'm saying? I uh, I had a good time, man, just navigating the streets of Atlanta, getting robbed and all kinds of, getting fighting and shit, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Playing ball all day, you know. Walking for no reason, like all the way to Hateville. We walked to Hateville one time for really? like fucking, from like, like past screaming wheels. I don't know why the fuck we was in Hateville. Like, this is a like eight mile walk, guys. We, we were supposed to go to the rec to play basketball up here, and they closed it one day. We had no ride, so we just tried to walk back down Stewart Avenue. We were like, this shit far as hell. That's so, crazy. Just little kid shit, man. I just remember it was a fun time. You know, it was dangerous. It was more dangerous now that I look back. Like, I was about to say, did you realize it was dangerous at the time? I didn't realize it was that dangerous. Was still, you know, they had Atlanta child murders. That's a little mm-hmm. older than me. But, mm-hmm. you know, your mom always was very weary. We had to call home every hour, you know, or find a, find a way to call or get your ass home. She had to see you. My mom had to see you every two or three hours. We always had, like, a watch on or a clock or something. Okay. So I'm 
I'll call the police. I don't see you in three hours. I don't see you in two hours. I'll call the police. I'm like, ah, oh, shit. Let me get on home. It's me and my little brother walking around doing shit, playing video games and skateboarding and riding bikes and shit like that. What kind of student were you? I was uh, I was talkative. I would be talking in class, getting to laugh here and there, but I would do my work, though. That's the thing about, like, my parents didn't play that shit with school. Or, you know, my mom was valedictorian when she was 16 years old, so... Mm. She didn't play. My daddy dropped out, but you know they didn't. They didn't fuck around with school. You, I'm really not even supposed to be talking in class, but I used to get in trouble for that shit. But as long as I did my work, you know, I, uh, I think one of my punishments one time was uh, I couldn't watch *A Living Color*. That shit killed me. I was like, oh my god, I will do anything that it needs to correct this. Right. Don't take like, *A Living Color* away. I couldn't, she, she's like, I ain't gonna whoop you. <laughs> What's your favorite show? I was like, Living Colors? She was like, no more. Than that. I was like, oh, why did you do that? You wow. Know, so, yeah, then we moved to uh, moved to College Park. Then I went to Bannerkin. I went to McNair over there. So we was on the south side a little bit. And then in my ninth grade year, middle of ninth grade year, we moved again to the south side, like Jonesboro, Riverdale area. Went to Lovejoy. So okay. that's where I graduated from, Lovejoy High School on the south side. But that's when... The great migration was happening. Mm. Every everybody was coming from Southwest Atlanta, the West Side, Bankhead, Bowen Homes to Jonesboro, Riverdale. You know what I'm saying? That was where all the doctors and the upperly mobile black people was down there. You know what I'm saying? So we was down there in the uh, Riverdale, Southside, Jonesboro area. My parents still live over there now, so you know. Okay. Played football. You know, okay. played football in high school. Okay. I was uh, I got wittiest in high school. <laughs> in the really? yearbook. Yeah, I got a superlative. I got one superlative <laughs> in my yearbook. So being a white chick named Aaron. <laughs> really? Yeah, we was we was having to make do. We was the only black kids at this school. We was like the first black kids that was popping. And then black folks started coming. It's like a black school now, but you right. know, we was the first ones. So. I was at transition from Sylvan and, and everything coming to go to Lovejoy though. Was it was like I was I remember being mad for no reason. Shit, like I was an angry black man. I ain't <laughs> have no reason to be angry. I was just like, but why y'all laughing with these crackers and shit? Why the fuck wrong shot? Like I, Really? <laughs> yeah, I was like just pissed for no reason. <laughs> then, you know, something hit me like, hey man, you gonna you gotta make this experience what you're gonna make it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I just kinda got cool. I think one of my homeboys put my coat like, you know, everybody ain't racist and fucked up, but you know. You don't have to show. You, you, I, I just knew you had. You had to show your emotions right away. So I was just like, I got, I got cool. I got some white friends out there. They cool as hell. Yeah. But yeah, it was just, it was a culture shock going from black, black as hell to like white people, white teachers. Like I, we had a cross country teacher. We would see this nigga running to school. I was, that shit blew my mind. I was like, Coach Westbrook, you like you here? <laughs> like you ran from like he lived on like my side of town. I was like, you run to school every day? He was like, yeah, I ride my bike back home. I'm like, what the hell? Really. You? Like, don't you be musty or nothing? He was like, I take a shower at the school. And I was like, oh, okay, all right. That's part of the witty part. <laughs> yeah, I was right like, there. I know he musty. He got to be. I just saw him running. Now he in homeroom. This shit is crazy. Right, right. Yeah, he told me. <laughs> he just does that to keep his health up. But, you know, it was a culture shock, man, seeing a lot of, you know, whites and whites and blacks getting along. And then, getting along. Know, our baseball it? team was fire, and we had a kicker. That's how it's, I knew we had the kicker. Nigga, we started playing them black schools when I got to um Lovejoy. Yeah. And we was we'll be like with Mays or somebody. They they them niggas go for two every time, bro. Them motherfuckers did not have no kicker. The quarterback might kick that bitch. <laughs> in, like the coach might kick that motherfucker. We they be, <laughs> go for two. And we get in the 30, we kicking that bitch. We had a white boy that we couldn't leave practice until he kicked a couple 50 yarders before we really? left. Yeah, his name was uh, Chris Ray. Wow! Hell yeah! A lot of my one of my wow. a lot of my best my good homeboys play football together, man. They, they had us in real like college training camp situations. You know what I'm saying? We went to camp. We had like three, four, four days and shit like that. So that's kind of what made you like a man. And I found out that I could still be funny within the confines of discipline and all that okay. shit. You know what I'm saying? Okay. What that's position you played? Was. I played center. Did you? Okay. Played center. The number one play quarterback sneak. I used to fall back count. Go get the safety. Yeah. That nigga, pew! Because I, I was slow, so it just I just needed, he needed a wall, like a little avenue to cut through. My quarterback was like 5'6", but he ran like a 4'2". Oh, wow. Yeah. And he couldn't see over my ass, so we shotgunned it to him. It was, it was a mess. We had, he looked like Robin Big over there, boy. That shit was a damn mess. We, <laughs> we had the shortest quarterback in the goddamn state, and this nigga was fast but as a fast. bitch. Like, oh, right, a before crease. Vic, this is pre-Vic years, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, this nigga been that corner. He could throw two, he was just short, that's all. Wow, that's crazy. Man. Yes, sir. <laughs> so uh, you transitioned from Lovejoy. What did you do after high school? 
at the high school, I went to college. I went to Fort Valley State first. Okay. Man, my buddy Viz, shout out to Viz, he still be hanging out. He got a podcast too, um, the Dice Shakers. But me and him went to high school there. We played football together. We both decided to go to Fort Valley State. And it was cool. We was there the first semester, and then we got into this big ass fight down there. And then like some, it was, it was a bunch of shit in a row. Like some niggas had broken our room, stole clothes, and stole shit. And they found out it was like some local dudes and. Mm. Dudes in our dorm got in a fight with them dudes, and it was, it was a whole thing. And then my, our parents was like, "You want to stay down here?" And and uh, they didn't want us to stay down there with that with mess and shit going on. But my dad was like, "I get you a pistol. You want to stay down this motherfucker?" I was like, I, "Shit, I go back." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was, I had them guns down there at Fort Valley. Boy, but I, I, I had to Fort sit Valley. out the rest of that semester. And I was working at the uh, commissary at Fort Gillum. Mm. Fort Gillum worked at the commissary, bagging right. groceries. I was making like a hundred dollars a day over there back. You know them yeah. veterans; they don't fuck around. They tip. Yeah. This shit yeah. is, was a, you, it's like a waiting list to get the job over there. You got to know somebody. So I did that until um, I transferred to the University of West Georgia. Got back in school, and I started comedy while I was there. Okay. Yeah, I started it from. Man, you know all this time I've known you, man. I didn't know you went to West Georgia. I went to the University of West Georgia, brother. Really? Yes, yes sir. That's what I used when to. When it was the university, I was I was there when it was West Georgia College. He was there with Ryan Cameron and them. Yeah, he was down yeah. there. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. My freshman year was Ryan's senior year. Yeah, man. I was down there. I stayed in the, over there with the Mexicans, Brookwood. With the Brookwood. Mexicans. Wow. Man, it'd be four in the morning. <laughs> yes, uh... ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> tuba beating in the truck. Then they got 12s with all tuba. Yeah, man. Brookwood, Brookwood was turned up all the time. time. I went back. That's like the Greek village now. They it's tore all that whole now. shit down. Right. They had that club. <laughs> the best club in the world is down in West Georgia called Calhoun. Calhoun. It's down the street. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stripped out church with no ceiling in it. It's just beams. They got two fans in the wall. You be freak the girl be freaking on you back in the day, you call it freaking bitch twerking. <laughs> you be on the wall and nigga, your hand might go in that fan. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Like you <laughs> hey, niggas. Hey, we used to sit and watch the fan all night like this nigga. Here you go. Here you go. Got him. Oh, got his tip. Got the tip of that finger. So you know. All That's the girls, crazy, man. That man. Calhoun was the that. shit. They had a Go Big Girl night. Remember that song? Go Big Girl, what yeah. you going? Nigga, that song was out. They had a scale out there. <laughs> no. Weighing them girls to get in that goddamn club, nigga. It's a Q-Dog ran club, by the That's way. All the correct. Q's That's run correct. this club. The shit didn't open till midnight. That's correct. Drinks was $5, and it was jumping. It was like the bet. Like, I done been to clubs all around the world. <laughs> Fuck them clubs. That dirty little that fucking dirty church. <laughs> Them five dollar blue motherfucker boy. Hey man, you had to do them with some sweatpants up there. That's what we made up sweatpants shit. Like nigga, like I'm finna have my dick on somebody tonight. I'm wearing some sweats, Willie Esco tonight. We was <laughs> we was at them sweats on there, boy. I met my wife and I put my dick on her ass right there in the party, and then I knew. I said I knew. It's me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious, man. Hey, man I did not Georgia? know that, man. That's crazy. I used to bro. drive from West, I used to drive from Carrollton to Uptown and back with an '83 Monte Carlo, bro. With that, that car, I was praying on it. I used to just be like, "Lord, let it crank up." Wow. <laughs> yes, I used to drive all the way to. You get got there when it wasn't a dry, it wasn't dry county no more. I forgot what it was. Yes, it was, it was a dry, dry county. Dry, we had to drive dry. to Douglasville to get the to alcohol. Fire to get alcohol. Yeah, had to drive because I worked in Douglasville. I worked at the TGI Fridays right by Arbor Place Mall. Yeah. So I would work because I was on academic suspension by this point. I was just living at school. <laughs> Shout out to the niggas just living yeah, at the whole, school. A whole bunch there. of that still going out Niggas be just living up there. Y'all ain't in no class no more. Your, your academic shit gone. You just up there going to parties. That's true. Story, I was up there really. just living at the school for a minute and then uh, started doing open mics, man. Jay Paul's in Uptown and I started coming. Every Tuesday, every Sunday, and then, you know, Big Sean, first person to take me on the road. Mm. Sean, like, come on, man. You got, I think he told me to dress up. It's a nice show. Uh, it was me, Chris Thomas, and somebody. You know what my dress up outfit was in 2002? <laughs> Brand new Wizards jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Black Levi's. Mm. Jordan 3 blue. <laughs> the blue Jordan 3s, the Wizards edition with the, with the hat. <laughs> that was the dress up. I was like, nigga, you want the dress up <laughs> shit now? I got a black t-shirt underneath. That will make it dressed up. You got a black tee under the jersey and the black jeans. Wow, no country. <laughs> yeah, really though. So, so you said with your first time, but how'd you, how how that comedy book hit you? Oh man, I was always, the, I was the same Ronnie at all times, just talking shit and being the life of the party, or just you know, me and my buddy Vince will. We had to like the 
everybody know these dudes. Like, Ferg, I'm sure he one of these people, like, in the dorm, y'all going to find somewhere to chill out, post up, and then everybody will be around y'all in a little while. But most of the girls be around, and everybody be around y'all just talking shit. So um, I had broke up with this girl I was with for a long time. My first my first time going raw in a relationship. I was hurt, but that bitch started fucking with a nigga at the airport. Damn, boy. I'm so glad I blew up a little bit, just a little bit. <laughs> I blew up a little bit, and then, goddamn, yeah, I broke up with this chick, and I was in there. And then I, had, I was writing these jokes down, and I was, my buddy was like, man, get your ass up, boy. And my roommate, my nigga Vince, like, get your ass up, bro. And I, um, I was like, I think I want to do comedy. I was like, I've been writing this shit. I think I want to do it. I went to Uptown first, and then I got there late. I couldn't go up. I was sitting in the crowd watching. And I remember Earthquake was guest hosting. And he was like, is anybody funny? Shit. Mm. And then the nigga said, I am. And it was K-Dub. He was, in the, he was sitting in the second row. He was... K-Dub came up there, did his joke, and killed it, and got off stage, and that was his first time going up, and I was like, I couldn't go up that Sunday, so I went up the next Thursday. So we kind of, like, share the same comedy mm. origin stories. Like, yeah. we, yeah, me and K-Dub, was, we was the ones running around, man. We was the young young dudes running around. Because it was harder back then because niggas was encouraging the boo. Like, right. the boo was <laughs> the thing to come do. Like, niggas come to boo you. Like, I remember Tiny T.I. dating in, in Uptown. They That's was right. just starting to go together. That's right. I remember Bobby and Whitney came in. Kalisa and Nod, like, everybody came on a date to boo these open mic niggas. <laughs> but, like, niggas was coming in there ripping. Yeah. So, you know, we, we had to step up, you know. And I remember Joe Cole, rest in peace, used to have me uh, fly to Coco's. He owned another club in Detroit, Coco's mm-hmm. House of Comedy on Jefferson. And that's another club where the OGs is vicious. Like, everybody's showing the clip of downtown Tony Brown. I was talking about the two fell out and all that shit on Bad Boys of Comedy. That nigga is from Detroit. And Joe might have you featuring or headlining, but Tony Brown going to come do a guest spot. He going to do 30 minutes, mm. kill. Foolish going to pull up, do 20 minutes of heat. And then you got to go up. you <laughs> like, God damn. So that's when I, I was kind of forged in the fire. Like, they put... Me and K-Dub and all, of, all that group, we got put in crazy situations. Like, I remember going on tour with Ricky, and he walked in late was like, uh, I'm a host, Ronnie, can you, can you headline, you go last? And we was at Zany somewhere. And mm-hmm. I was like, what? That was my first time headlining out of town. He said, Ronnie, I'm a host. You got 45. You can go, you can headline. I said, yeah, I think so. Right. And I only had like 15, but I kind of <laughs> winged it. I got, that, I got through that shit. So that just let me know. Those situations kind of like have you ready for everything. Uptown get you ready for everything, man, because they used to have... It used to be BMF over there, Michael Vick and some dogs. He said some dogs. <laughs> it used to be like Michael Vick, BMF, Chris Tucker might come in and be on the other side. And like every celebrity that ever popped in the city will be over there. And then like the comedians that don't normally go up on Sunday will try to go up and then be cool and talk to the celebrities. And they'll get fucking booed. And that shit was just amazing. It was, no, I used to hold me to the end. He'd be like, hey, you got your honey bun? I'm gonna need you to come up here. These niggas gonna die. It's like three niggas gonna get booed, and I'm gonna throw you up there. Like he was like, really? <laughs> that's when I knew I was kind of. Like, he was like, like a like a secret secret weapon or some shit. Like, and shout out to Aunt Love too, cause he helped me get those jokes all the way right. Those music cues, and he mm. was like, we was chopping it here. Let this go in too long here. Let's try it like this. Right. So I just remember them life lessons. You know, just you know. Preparation every is everything. Everything. Prep is everything, bro. You gotta always be working on the new shit and prepping for, you know, your big stage show. You know what I'm saying? So So at what point when you was on stage in your early career where you realized that this is what I really wanna do? I mean, was there was there a, a, a flash moment for you? Um when um it I was because I was working at I was still working a job. I was working my dad was like the head chef at this restaurant in Fayetteville and I would have to work there. I would work there at night. I would work in I would work at Fridays in Douglasville in the daytime, like from six to two or some shit. And then I would go do stand up or some shit. And then I'll go some nights I'll go work over there. I was working two jobs because I wasn't in school. And then they started paying me more and I was getting these gigs and the shit was coming. I was requesting too much off my dad was like uh, go on to quit this shit. Go on to just do that shit full time. Just go. Just go. Really? Like my, he kicked me out of the restaurant. He was like, "Go on to do that shit." So, wow. you know, I thank my pops every time. He's just like, "Go do you, like you can always get a job." Get the fuck out of here. So, he kind of threw me outside, and I had to you know survive. So you know, when I started making enough to be on my own, independent, I figured out like recording a comedy album, selling the CD, selling the DVD. You know what I'm saying? It was just 
those lessons, but like going on stage and and uh, being able to make folks laugh, and then they keep calling me back for stuff. I was like, oh, this is a you can have a job doing this. Mm. Like I didn't know, I didn't know. But, wow, that's because that's, that's, yeah. I was gonna ask you how your family feel about it, but they supported you then. They support, they big time support. But my mom was in the beginning like, you sure? You you know, you want to do something else? You know, you always go back to school. And uh, I was like, no, I think this is it. And my granddad was like, yeah, you, you like that shit, don't you? You do that shit good, don't you? <laughs> I was like, thank yeah, I do. Did they come out to shows? Yeah, I got, I got, I had like a lot of uh, big success early. So it was like, I started comedy in 02, but I got on Comic View after about seven months, mm. eight months doing comedy. I wasn't even doing it a year. I was riding in the car with Hurricane Andrew. We going to Florida, and they booking him for Comic View. And he like, yo, I got the next funniest nigga. If you don't book this nigga, you stupid. You can have my check if you don't book this nigga. Like, he going crazy. Like, for me, I'm like, damn. And they like, cool, here. Sight unseen, they booked me to go to wow. do Comic View in Miami with him. So I arranged to get my ticket and stuff, and it was a big deal. I remember, like, borrowing the money to get a jersey to wear on TV, my little <laughs> Dale Murphy shit from Distant Replay. Shout out to my whole girl, Amy. But uh, yeah, man, um, just going down there doing Comic View was a big deal because I was like, I remember I watched this shit every day, right, like, you know. Right. And it was in Miami, and they was booing niggas. They was booing niggas on the taping. Really? Niggas was getting <laughs> booed the fuck up out of there. It was the I, the I Poppy do 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 do, and they had Arn S J hosting it when I was there. But when it aired, it was Bruce Bruce hosting it. Bruce Bruce finished the season out, but yeah, I did good, man. It was it was fun, man. So it was the first big stage you're on. Oh shit! Um, I did. Um, I was doing Uptown. My first big stage had to be. Um, I think I did the Georgia Dome one time. Ryan Cameron had me come out there for the Battle of the Bands thing he was hosting, and I did like the Honey Bun joke in the Georgia Dome. Yeah, oh man, I know that went. Crazy. <laughs> that was nuts. It yeah. was crazy. Like I, I was like, where'd that come from anyway, man? Man, it came from the Alicia Keys song was out that I keep on falling. And I was in the car about to go in the comedy club, actually. And my, I had, like, got some Wendy's or something. And the, the shit was on the seat and the, the radio was playing. And I was just looked at the food like, <laughs> I said, this is some fat-ass shit right here, boy. This song is like, I keep on falling. I was like, yeah. And I did the shit just like I did the joke. I, was like, I need something smaller than Wendy's. I figured I should do it with donuts at first. I tried it with donuts, and then I did like a honey bun. And I made up like, like a lot of my jokes. I find the punchline, what's the funny part, and then work backwards and make the story up backwards. So I was like, I gotta make up something to say the reason why. Like my homeboys get mad as hell when I go on a diet. They be trying to trip me up and shit. Yeah. They walking around like, oh sis ass, why well, here you go? And then I did that, and then they used to go crazy on Alicia Keys, and I tried it one time, and it didn't work at Wanda Smith night, mm. and I was like, I need something else. Then I was like, I got to bite that motherfucker. <laughs> 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 I think Nardin was like, niggas was punching it up as I was doing it. Like, I think niggas was, OGs was like, come here, nigga, bite that bitch, right. and then do another song, and da 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 So niggas kind of helped me craft okay. that motherfucker, like, right on the spot, so that shit became, a, a, like, niggas was having honey buns before I even got to the show and shit. I, my mom would have, like, two <laughs> cases of honey buns. I like, can I have some fruit, please? Like, I'm sick of biting these goddamn <laughs> deadly diabetes biscuits. The fuck? It's a diabetes <laughs> biscuits. <laughs> so you you officially retired that that particular bit? I don't do I do it if somebody asked me to, because you got, got music to it and shit. It's like yeah. a music bit. Like, I remember they used to kind of shame the comedians for doing music, just the older comics. And I just re realized it's like, because you ain't got one. You don't have, like, a little something to... Cause that shit hit harder in like a college or like a, a arena or like mm. a stadium. Those music bits go crazy. I saw Lil Duval killing with those like music parodies sure. and shit like that. I'm like, dude, like he been he killing with the music on his own music, but he would have like this song make it be like this, and he like, God damn, that shit hit hard. Like, yeah. so I, I I really studied what to do and like. Situation because we, you know, Atlanta is a rare place where you go to a bar and they got all the damn TVs on. Right. You got to make these niggas laugh. <laughs> but they really listening, but the TVs is on. Yeah. Because if you're not shit, they're going to be looking right back at the game. So Thanks. it's like you got to hold their attention with all this shit going on. But I just know that shit make you better when you go out of town. When you go out of town as an Atlanta comedian, you be killing like, God damn, this shit easy. Y'all listening to me? <laughs> Y'all looking right at me the whole time? The lights is working, the mic on? Okay. That's Atlanta crazy. make it tough. It's like hooping with ankle weights on. Like y'all niggas know y'all be dunking after they had an ankle weights on <laughs> yeah. a little bit. You go out of town, boy. 
Different yeah. ball game. Atlanta make you tough, man. I like I like this city, bro. Cause we don't give a fuck. Diddy come here every week. Nigga don't give nigga don't give a fuck about nobody here. They like nigga. Thanks. <laughs> boy, bye. Right. That's, <laughs> right. That's, that's true. the whole city. Dear Atlanta, boy, bye. Yeah, that's true story. And yeah, they don't care about nothing you got going. But if you, if you make them listen, they fuck with you. <laughs> so after the comic view experience, did the doors start opening up more for you? After yeah, I did uh, that Walter Latham Kings of Comedy search. Mm. He was looking for like the next king of comedy. He went all around the cities. He had these little little competitions and semifinals and. I think I came in second in one of the ones in Atlanta, and then he picked out of those people to go on tour, open for the Queens, and then it was like 12 guys, and it was 12 cities, and um, each city they voted person off. It was a reality show style, and the winner gets announced in Madison Square Garden on the last date at, as the new king of comedy, get 25 grand, and uh, yeah, that's what happened. So I, I won that whole tour, and then uh, that happened, and then Walter was like, Brought me into his office. He was like, you know, I got some new stuff coming out. You know, we're gonna do something like Def Jam. It's because it was nothing on TV where comedy was uncensored. It was only Comedy View, and then that was off. And Def Jam had been off, so he was like, this he was coming up with Bad Boys. He was like, I'm thinking about partnering with Diddy, mm. and uh, you know, they came out with Bad Boys, and then I found out I, I was going first when they first decided to do it. It was like. <laughs> Bob something to call Walter at his office. He was like, yo, tell Ronnie, tell these niggas. No, he called Walter. Walter called Bob in front of me. And he didn't know I was in the room. He was like, well, uh, Bob, what's up, man? Tell him uh, who we got in the lineup. What's the order? He's like, he said, yo, we're going to put pressure on these niggas. We put Ronnie Jordan first. I, think I was like, nigga, first. These folks been sitting outside in Brooklyn for two hours in the heat, and I'm first. That's crazy. Wow. So, yeah, man, that was a good, that was a dope experience, too. I, yeah. I had, like, some dope. Moments in my life, and it's like you look back, like damn, I did do all that shit. You know what I'm saying? That's good stuff. Cause you just got your head down working. To me, I'm just trying to maintain the course, stay the course. Cause you know you get distracted by all the goofy shit, and mm. you know it's gonna be dips and highs and lows. It's like how you handle the lows is how you come out of that type of stuff. Because it's like you're not gonna be the hottest at all times. It's like you got to kind of cultivate a community, a network of people. You know, to kind of get have your next moves. You know, cause I was like maybe. I can do some behind the scenes stuff. I know I, I can write for people, so I did a lot of that. So that's that's what, where I'm at right now, kind of writing for TV shows, punch ups, and stuff like that. Write for other comedians, still going on the road with other comedians and doing my own shit. So, so you guys, like you said, you you and K Dub, you know what I mean? You talking about Sean taking on the road and all that stuff. You guys kind of had like a a nice collab going. You guys kind of work together, support each other. Do you? What do you see different about now? Is, is that still exist? I think it exists even more now because the younger cats are like, they'll have like a dorm payment, for example. They're from Atlanta, but they live in LA. They all went to school together. They all moved in together. Everybody, they all would do skits and they all would like edit and each person had a job. Like the younger comics are getting together and they crew got somebody that shoot video and somebody to do audio and somebody to make beats from scratch and somebody that build shit. Like they crews come like the Avengers now. They <laughs> These little niggas ain't playing. Like that's and the, Every crew need an old nigga. I'm telling y'all, y'all need y'all an OG to kind of guide and steer the ship a little bit. So I kind of, I like pulling up on the young dudes. That's what kind of sustains me. I always, like, if I see somebody, like, cracking on Instagram before they kind of blow up, I always DM, like, yo, you got a set? You mm. doing comedy? What are you doing? Because I know somebody finna come and offer them a crazy amount of money, and they probably never did stand-up before. Like, you want to be ready when they call you, because, you know, you only get a few times and not be good for $8,000. They're going to be like, yo, nah, he ain't it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I really be want to protect the niggas from Atlanta. Like, I, I, I want all of us to be good. So, if I see a young dude that's, that's killing on the skit shit, I DM like, yo, you got a set? You need a set. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's smart. Don't that's play good. no games. So, saying that, you've adapted to this social media world now. You know yeah. what I mean, it wasn't there when, when you first came out. So, I mean, how do you feel about it overall? I think it's an awesome tool, man. I think the youngest is showing us how to get money off of it. I'm like really still studying myself. I'm getting like, I'm, recently the people have been, I've been getting noticed in the airport. It's not from stand up. It's not from nothing. It's like, I know you from Instagram. I know you from Facebook. I know you from YouTube. I'm like, damn, for real? Like YouTube is the biggest viewed shit on the world. Like I didn't know <laughs> it was like that. And you know, it's just. It's like you got your own movie studio right here in your hand. You got your own TV network right here in your hand. It's like now it's like who gonna hustle? Mm. It's like 
because you know, like the older comments, that's our problem. The older comments be like, man, it ain't right, and I gotta do this. Them young niggas like, put that shit out, bro. That shit terrible. We'll shoot something else. Mm. And then you get better. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Now right. you learn it and you teach yourself how to direct. You teach yourself how to write, direct, act all in one thing. And they becoming monsters. These niggas are evolving into. And now the women coming. The fine women coming. That's that's what y'all going to be scared of. <laughs> but these bad chicks is funny. That's what niggas going to be out of work for real. Like, yeah. the shit is evolving, man. I like, I like how the phone makes shit even. If you can get it cracking... Ain't nothing holding you back, but sometimes they kind of hide the algorithm and shit is funny on certain platforms, but it helps if you do it right. If you do something consistent, it's going to be somebody to come check for you every day. So that's what I've been at. I'm like, I'm catching motherfuckers that's pretty my, much my age and, you know, they like, I, I want to say that too. That's dope what you said about that, you know? Gotcha. Yeah, man. So what you think about this new comic view reboot? How you feel about you I'm excited that? about it, man. Anytime they got a comedy platform where we can go... Like we got a goal to shoot for. Like when I first started comedy, that was the goal to get on Comedy View. Like mm. it was something on TV that you had a goal to shoot for. Now you just gotta hope you get on a Don't Tell Comedy or one of those little like Chocolate Sunday, some kind of platform to get a lot of views. Because TV wasn't TV was the goal. Like now TV is not the goal. People don't even watch TV. I got a comedy special that came on TV two years ago, and I still tell niggas like, oh, it was on. It's on Epics. It's on MGM Plus. I gotta tell them the app and where it's at. So, you know, I think. Um, the goal now is all that now, but I think the comic view boot is a good something to have for people to shoot for. Like people yeah. that's in my position, lower, higher. It's like I want to get on that, you know, because you got Mike Epps hosted T. I think T. I did a set on there. Uh, J. Ski killed it. I heard J. Ski killed it. Uh, fucking Tommy Davis is like it's some big dogs on there, and I, I like Kevin Hart doing content for us. It's like right. we need something. We need something consistently every year. More of that shit. You know what I'm saying? I like how other creators are putting out these uh, and friends shows and shit like that. It's just more stuff to consume. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. More places for us to be at. More yeah. work, more money to spread around. Absolutely. Absolutely. Sure. So when you think about um, things you've done thus far, what is it that's still on your to-do list? What is, like, what's your five-year goal, 10 years? Where are you, what's your goals going forward? Well, um, I got, you know, I want to produce my own film and my own TV show. I, I want to direct. I'm not going to tell all my goals because you never know who's praying against you. So I'm going <laughs> to keep my I'm keep saying. my prayers close to myself, <laughs> amen. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I got goals all over in all my businesses, man. I want to I bless that effort to turn it to like a luxury brand for big dudes, you know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get some more high-end pieces and, you know, more investors and stuff like that. But I've been been blessed, man. Shit, shit is going good at the level I'm at to be still in the game and maintain is still right. a big deal to me. Like, I pay my bills with my brain. Like, I still can sustain out here in this Joe Money streets. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Without, like, groveling. You know what I'm saying? Some motherfuckers be cutting your throat for a $100 room. You be like, my <laughs> nigga, it don't even be that serious. Like, like some of y'all pricing everybody out the money. They could get $300. you all rolling up. I do it for 100 You fucking... Like we competing, we what PMC be fighting over uh, crumbs. It's a bread truck right now, right there. and we just <laughs> Country Wayne got the way, man. Country Wayne has shown us get together mm. and I'm gonna help everybody get paid. Push the push the nigga who need to be pushed up front so he can help everybody. Like that's that's how it looks like it should be. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah, man. Like create the community. You need a network. You need somewhere to fall back. That's why Morning Culture was a blessing. Like that 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 gave me. That barbershop to be at like a lounge, like a like a lodge for a little community. Like I got my own tribe. Of, all of us are comedians and writers, and we've been doing it since probably like 2016. It was kind of like a, you know, I'm gonna stay at this club because you know they don't want our kind up there. So I'm gonna just create my own shit. We we had kickbacks, and we was the, we was the first ones doing like them secret parties and the secret kickbacks. We do comedy on stage all together. And we. Had a cannabis infused before y'all got it too hot and the police was everywhere. Y'all so goofy, bro. I'm talking about niggas had a whole weed man vendor event. Like, y'all dumbass. Why you got the flyer up on the gram of we're going to have got there the Zaza at this table? <laughs> Stupid, man. People fuck up the good shit, man. I'm telling you, man. I remember when Secrets was out. We need yeah. to bring them back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, more than culture is the family, man. We kind of, we doing our own production things and stuff. Me and Ferg. Like, that's the thing. You got to keep some young energy around you, man. Ferg started going on the road with me, man, and he's like, OG, you need to film all this shit you doing. Like, I was mm. on my college tour. He's like, no, nah, this is a show. 
he set up some cameras and he, like I we show him me and him in the car laughing and talking about songs and shit and then you know chop it up it's on my YouTube like I had to get I had to learn some new skills and get acclimated to what was out because I I started going I went on that Kev on stage keep your distance and mm. I, them dudes making a living off their YouTube and I man I was like okay okay I see you can make money at this at the house you just gotta you gotta hustle. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta get the right people around. You get you somebody that's shooting edit, man. A comedian. If you wanna go on the road with an OG, learn how to work that camera. I'm telling you now, that camera gonna get you in the car, that camera gonna help you open up, that camera gonna get you in the space. <laughs> and if you know how to work that camera good and know how to chop and edit and post shit, you're gonna get in there quicker than somebody that's just funny. I'm telling you now. I believe that now. Man, yeah, I'm you say we're great into the more more than culture. I was gonna ask you about, you know, how that how that started. So Got a, a a a crew that you just kind of roll with, and y'all. We think we think it's thieves, bro. We kind of it kind of so shit. What happened was I was me and Tyler had that show Boss Up on We TV, mm-hmm. and uh, and he was getting ready for it. He was like writing, and he was Remo had always had a studio. He always had a production studio. Remo he'd be over there, and Remo spot writing. Kamala would be over there. They had their podcast more than culture, and then they asked Tyler mm-hmm. would sit in, I think, a couple times, and I would sit in. And then, they asked Tyler to be in it on the group on the show, and then they asked me to be on the show, and I was like, oh, "Okay, hell yeah, let's do this." And then they was like, "All right," so we start revamping shit, doing the, the logo, doing it because I, I brought the merch to it. I was like, "Nigga, oh, we got to sell merch," you know. And I made everybody have their own merch. That was my goal for my crew. Everybody got their own separate merch. Uh, even uh, Goldie, you see Goldie everywhere. That's .dot net. That's our camera guy, our producer. He was. Wow. With us, you know, he would wear, we wear his shit on our show. But yeah. I just saw Atlanta start wearing it. I was like, oh, nigga, we really influence oh, niggas. Crazy. Like, I just, that <laughs> shit was dope to see me wearing a goddamn trucker hat that looked like a captain hat. And niggas like, I need that goddamn hat. I'm like, yeah, you do. You do need it. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I like hustling. I like kind of being, making your own rules. I'm not good at taking orders. I worked at the radio station a while. It was cool. But like working for yourself is the best shit ever, bro. I don't care. It, it's harder. It's a harder role, but it's like only person I got to be mad at is myself if I don't fuck if I fuck up or something like that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? But I, I, you know, I independent contractor out. I wrote, wrote on a couple things. Like Tyler got me the job at Wild and Out, and that shit was cool. It was it was it's high demand over there. You got to be on it. It's like being in the lunchroom for ten hours. <laughs> and everybody from all the alternative schools is ready to roast. Man, I say ready. <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's like fucking Space Jam for roasters. It's like right. <laughs> Super Roast College over there. So, yeah, man. But, you know, Tyler kind of like, he. I, I watch what he doing. I get inspired by the shit he doing right. And, you know, I just see him go from the dude with the book bag. And now he's one of the funniest motherfuckers in the country, like, killing a while now. He's been writing over there for years. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He was writing before he was writing on the show. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, man, that motherfucker got some kind of crazy work ethic. Ferg don't go to sleep. Like, all these motherfuckers go get it. All my partners go get it. But, you know, you got to be around people that's going to push you. You see them working hard. You're like, okay, I need to step my shit up. And then, you know. Keep pushing it. Yeah, it's like, you know, and then you could, you got to be around niggas that you would have a beer with. You know what I'm saying? That's good people. Some some comedians ain't got no good energy around them. They don't mean no good to nobody. You're like, bro, why is you so negative? Right. Right, I can't right. be around this. You got to right. decide to not be around. Like I was, COVID let me pick out who I wanted in my immediate circles, and I was like, and plucking niggas out that I didn't want around me. Pluck, 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 pluck. Uh, uh. Cause uh, your girl will help you too. She be like, he don't, he don't mean no good, you know. Mm. <laughs> so yeah, man, we got more than culture is the is the brand. That's the game. We uh just dropped a comedy special. All of, all four of us uh, independently on morethanculture.com. The merch is going crazy. Uh, we got Ferg with his No Draws podcast. We got like Branch. We just uh, collab with uh, 85 South. We're going to start putting our podcast on their streaming platform because it's good it makes sense, man. It's like, why, why not unite the families? They always been, been good, 100 solid niggas, and they always show us the way. It's like, sometimes you got to watch what the youngest are doing. Like, that's, I was like, shit, Carlos is on it. Let me try to figure out, you know, how to get my own shit, like. Every every Makes comedian sense. needs somewhere to go to talk every week or somewhere to go get a thought off. You know what I'm saying? Because that's yeah. how I write now. Just the podcast helped me stay on my shit. It's like doing a radio show. I'm sure you know it. It's like <laughs> <laughs> you got to talk every day. Right. You're like okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Now it makes sense, man. You know why not do it? Yeah, because you know? I was doing radio a lot anyway. I was doing a lot of guest 
hosting jobs on the radio and stuff like that. Host for a month, host for a week. Mm-hmm. Oh, if you want them three, you know. So let me ask you something. You know, what, what's your thoughts on on the on the brawl in Montgomery? Oh, the Montgomery <laughs> brawl was a, a beautiful day in Black history. The ancestors were smiling the when that brother smiling. threw that goddamn hat up, <laughs> like the Bobby Schmurter video. The whole hood pulled up. Boy. The whole hood pulled up. That was amazing because it was like, oh, y'all thought it was sweet like that. Y'all yeah. thought y'all was finna get this. And I like how our blackness just shined through that week because we found out where the white folks work at. Mm. They had a mini mart. Niggas shut the mini mart down. They mm. found out everything. <laughs> like it was a perfect storm. Like, first of all, y'all parking in the wrong shit. He just doing his job. And get y'all ass on. It's another boat coming full of niggas. <laughs> they already had our back. It was all you had the Wakandans coming in. That's what. <laughs> that's how Black Panther should have ended. How the Montgomery brought the new Black Panther is trash. They let that Mexican come out that water and slap the shit out of everybody and kill goddamn the mama. Well, y'all should have had that little chair down there. All right, that the chair. <laughs> Be knocking their ass out as soon as they get out the water. And that shout out to Aquaman, the nigga Aquaman. who swam across, bro. They yes, call that nigga uh, Little Fish. <laughs> Aquaman, the internet just had the best Incredible. response. It was so Incredible. fun. And then like 50 more angles came. Yeah. And he was like, oh, from this side, it was a bunch of niggas out there. <laughs> 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 they, they, niggas, was, niggas was taking videos with the chairs. Like, nigga, I'm putting E by my bed tonight, <laughs> but hell no. Nah. Like, Home Depot's out of folding chairs. When that nigga hit that white lady with that motherfucking white baby shower chair in the head like like a goddamn Bret Hart. Right, right. They oh, it was amazing. They, they put, <laughs> I saw them put Luther Vandross a chair is not a chair. <laughs> As she was hitting the lady, I said the internet is. Am- I know internet's amazing. Harry Tubman and Coretta Scott King up there like, boy, that shit going crazy. Oh, like, we man. fuck with this. You see the good times one. Nigga, I didn't. Oh man, they got all the good times music on. No. Oh man, that was my favorite one so far, man. That hey, was classic. Hey man, they had a reenactment. Shout out to that boy, funny. Him and his homeboys did a reenactment by the pool. By the pool. That shit went viral. That shit got like yeah. three hundred fifty million views. That's <laughs> crazy, man. That shit, like, like it was a fuck around and find out moment. It and really black was. Black people shine. It was our retort to January six. It mm. was like, y'all got January six, but we got August fifth. <laughs> The Montgomery, we going that need to be the name of an expansion team. The Montgomery River Brawlers, the Montgomery Brawlers as a hockey team. Come on, and that would go crazy. I'm getting a Montgomery Brawlers jersey. Man. I don't give a shit, y'all. Nigga, what? That sounds like a team right. with she. With he hate me on the back. We we resign. He hate me to the Montgomery Brawlers, nigga. Come on, oh, man. man. That That's shit was classic. black excellence. Was. Personified. I appreciate that. Shout out to everybody helping. When you sit there getting beat down by a group of white people, get in there. If you don't <laughs> throw the hat in there, get your ass in there. <laughs> Nigga, they choked George Floyd on tape. Somebody could have just pushed the cop off of him, took a little charge. Come on, man. Help us out. Don't film us. Help, nigga. I know that's right. So, no, that's that right. shit cleared that's everybody's weird. soul and reset us, got us ready for Beyonce. Uh, <laughs> no doubt. If Beyonce come out that bitch with a folded chair, nigga, niggas gonna fall on the ground. Yeah. You mean, what? <laughs> Could you imagine that? Oh. Be, Blue Ivy, you know Blue Ivy don't want to be there. She be dancing like this. <laughs> like, let that baby go to bed, man. Blue Ivy did 50 dates. She's sick of everybody. She's like, I want to go to Grandma Tina house. I'm ready to leave. <laughs> <laughs> that little baby got a Jay-Z face. Too funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan, we're going to wrap up one last question, brother. Yeah, man. We'll do a top five, man, on Classic Conversations every Tuesday, man. Uh-huh. So, i like to wrap the show up with the top five, man. Let's do it. So, give me your top five rap artists of all time. Oh, shit. That's a, that's a very personal list. I don't... <laughs> <laughs> niggas judge me. My my palette is very Atlanta. It's very skewed. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Top five in no particular order is okay. uh, Andre three thousand and Big Boy. Big Boy and Andre both is in my top five. I got CeeLo Green in there because he can rap. Like people don't know that he's that's one of my favorite rappers, CeeLo Green. I got Jay Z in there. Okay. And I got uh. Who else I fuck with big time? I got Devin the Dude in there, bro. Mm-hmm. I fuck with Devin the Dude on like super tough. Like okay. 
Devin the Dude is one of my favorite. T.I. is in there. Top, he's top 10 for me. T- okay. But we know him now. We don't, I know bump down on my list. I don't see he he do comedy now, so he, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shout out to Tim. <laughs> Shout out to the high mom. Yeah, T.I. is top 10 rapper for me, but top five is like both good, both outcasts. We got CeeLo, we got CeeLo, Andre Big Boy, Jay-Z, and uh, Devin the Dude. I'm going to fuck with it. Scarface is right around in there too. Okay, okay. But I listen to more Devin than Scarface. It's really? It's weird. It's a it's a smoking thing, man. This, this, <laughs> he is the culture of what these niggas trying to be. It's like Devin the dude and currency probably the same person. I don't know. <laughs> they just for different eras. You know what I'm saying? But like the niggas who like to lay back and burn one, that's that's the good the good music. It's like damn to the blues for real. So you know, but I listen to a lot of R and B too though. The older okay. I get, the less. I don't want to hear all that bump the bump shit. No, I get it. No, I get it. I, <laughs> I get mean, it. I listen to Brett Fiers and Summer Walker. I listen to a lot of R&B. I listen to, <laughs> my wife said I be listening to Hurt Nigga music. You listen to this Hurt Nigga music? This Hurt Nigga. <laughs> yes. I'm listening to Brett Fiers again. <laughs> Too funny, man. Well, I had a good time, man. I appreciate you, man. I don't talk your ear off in this room with this wood, in this cardboard. Uh, this, is like a, <laughs> this is like a graffiti. This is like a dance show in the 80s. Dance Welcome to Breakdance Talk. <laughs> That's what I see. Brick background, nigga, like graffiti. Uh, it's one of the hilarious. hardcore principles of hip hop. <laughs> hip hop. They ain't have outcasts on a lot of them lists. I've been upset. Like Elevator is one of the best songs ever made. Thanks. Like we we got to, You know, I'm very biased when it comes to my Killer Mike's new album is pretty good. It's, it is. It is. I ain't pretty lie. good. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, yeah. I can't yeah, lie. He, that, he came in on that one. Nigga, nigga had, that's it. That shit. Grown nigga shit. You be sitting there like nigga. I'm a, <laughs> My auntie was a junkie too, nigga. <laughs> My grandma was dead too, nigga. Can't listen to Killer Mike if you happen. You go, <laughs> you go. How you think about your grandma, man? You could be that motherfucker, like, boy, I'm shit, boy. I don't even want the blood. <laughs> Yeah, man. Y'all hey, check man. out Departments coming soon, too. Oh, T.I.'s yeah. directorial debut, oh, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. How coming about that? Coming soon, man. It's, it's a lot of funny comedians in there, man. Everybody was talking shit about T.I. doing comedy. He really just, he said he started so niggas can see us. He was like, man, niggas need to see K-Dub, you, J-Ski, Nav. Like, you know, y'all need a bigger platform. So I pre- I was, I was, understood the assignment from day one, and I had to, like, kind of, like, get comedians. Like, if y'all shut up, he going to put us into movies, dumbass. I talked I talk about that from day one as well, bro. Joe was talking like, about that. Niggas talk that way out there, bless I say, man, quick. y'all understand, this man can open up doors that, Bruh. that you can't get in. Why would you? Man, what, y'all better, built, y'all better close Trap your City mouth. Trap City Cafe so fast. Well, we, he built, Trap City Cafe got built and finished quick as fuck and had a stage up. Just like that. That K-Dub is hosting. K-Dub get do with it. Man, I'm telling you, man. T.I. is good for comedy, bro. He And he funny. This nigga has done the work. I've seen him. He talking about his real life and the shit we want to know any fucking way. If y'all let Nene Leaks go on the road, Nene funny too. Like, <laughs> I'm telling you, bro, people is funny how they are. Like, let them be they self and just listen sometimes. I just feel like niggas be so critical. Everybody want to down. You know, you can't take nothing to Twitter. Twitter, they shit on everything. Mm. Come enjoy yourself, man. Go sit right. down at the comedy show and just laugh. It ain't about you all the time. That's this right. is somebody else's story. It's like watching the movie. That's right. So, That's you know. Right. No, I agree, man. I agree. It's yeah. great for comedy. Definitely open up doors, man. man it's cool, like you said, a whole movie where he brought out comedians who would never get a chance to bro, be in front of they a They was a, attacking a him in the media, and he just laid low and wrote a movie, bro. I was like, well, that's some discipline. And he was telling me, you know, I, I had a part, but I caught COVID the day of shooting. Tyler took over one day. Tyler had one day to learn that part and was off script the next day. I was like, well, he probably would better for it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so I wouldn't even... Man, that shit was amazing that niggas could keep it pushing. So he... I got over COVID and he found a place for me in the movie. Like, I go in the strip club with Killer Mike. It's, y'all wait till the departments come out, man. Wait till the departments come out. Everybody in there, funny as hell, throw it off one. I like with the young cats, Moneybag Mafia. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That boy funny. It, everybody in there. It's, it's, yeah. it's who's who. It's a 85 South, DC Young Fly, one of the executive producers. Like, it's all tribal shit going on. Y'all, if y'all don't see what's going on, you better get on board, man. If you ain't with the tribe, I don't know who you with. You better real, get on the network, nigga. Stop That's being real, mean. Man. Some of y'all niggas just ain't nice. Nobody want to be around you. 
That's true story. Like, come on, man. That's true story. Niggas want to get you some money. There be so many niggas that want to get you paid, and motherfucker be talking their way out the shit. <laughs> talking their way right out. of I it. be looking at nigga right now, like, see, he he just got himself off a show. Just like that. <laughs> he, he just talked his way right off that motherfucker. That's true story, man. <laughs> you just sit listen to a nigga and tell you everything, real. man. You listen That's to a motherfucker. Real. Hey, man, appreciate deal, you, man. man. Thank you for having hey, me. Hey, man, I appreciate you taking the time, brother. Appreciate it, but thank nah, you man. for always handling me with like like I'm one of the big artists, man. You always be like, nah, what you need? What we doing? This is what we doing. We doing this. We doing that. You know what I'm saying? Even when it was a transition between ownership and stuff, you kind of held it down to we nigga come you as a man. You know what I'm saying? There's man shit going on. We handshake. Then come in and get money. We go, but then we have a good time. Like This shit is a, all the waitresses can roast. Come up here if you want to. The, the waitress can roast the shit out your ass. <laughs> Tell you, the managers can roast. Everybody roasting up here. You try that dumb shit. <laughs> you can't sneak out on the tab because it's on the second floor. You, right. <laughs> you had to get pushed off the back. <laughs> you you could have just paid $8 for the chicken finger. You, you do it too much. <laughs> you can dive off the fucking balcony for some lamb chops. Nigga, come on, dog. Don't do that. Don't do that. Damn, don't do that, man. Hey, man. <laughs> Hey man, it's been a pleasure, man. I couldn't. I was looking forward to this this particular interview, man. Hey, man with man Ronnie it. Jordan, you know, I'll man. I'm coming outside, man. I, no, I man, know. I'll be in my own little cocoon of friends. <laughs> Come on my platforms and see me. I'm not going anywhere else. I'm breathing. Hey man, it's a sit down up town, man. With Shout man Ronnie Jordan. Man. Jordan man. Shout out to all the ladies who like his natural. That's a, that's a natural. <laughs> that's a natural. That's how you got that Prince of Key. You said, just make it nice and neat. You got it nice and neat, boy. That's that goddamn. That's a good Christian man right there, girl. <laughs> man, that, that that's a good man now. He a Bible reading man right there. He got to keep his haircut so at the golf at the links when they playing golf, they don't be doing. He could play for real. Little <laughs> <laughs> dude, that nigga be smacking that bitch four hundred yards. Like damn, took my money. They took my money. Any nigga who smoke and play golf, they could play for real. Any nigga who smokes cigars and play golf can really play golf. Don't. <laughs> Don't bet them niggas, dog. They gonna get your money. They don't do it. <laughs> hey man, enjoy it, man. Sit Thanks, man. Down, man. Ronnie Jordan. Man. Uh, we here. <laughs> I probably blocked all the little brick on my side. I don't even, you don't even see nothing behind me. I don't even, can't even tell I got a brick wall behind my shit. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs>